my little black children. You got to act right, talk right, uh, talk right, no, walk right. It, right the first time. it can happen to any so-called African-American woman and child in America. Being racially profiled by the police, being pulled over for no reason. Hi, my name is Nikki Bendross. I am mom to Xavier and Winston. I am a small business owner, plus size model, and an actress, and a host. I'm so busy, oh my God. So yeah, guys, I have fun when I'm doing my makeup. I like to talk to myself and just enjoy getting all, the oh, that's nice right there. That's hot. Oh. oh, that's sexy. See, oh, I love that. My husband says I love it a lot. So I love this a lot. Oh, that's pretty nice. See, it's not too much. But then again, I'm over the top. So I need a little bit more over the top color. Hi, my name is Xavier Ellerton. I am 19 years old. I love to sing. I'm a college student. I'm also a host. Oh yeah, I play video games as well. What else? I like to write. I like to make music. I do a lot. I'm very creative. It makes me feel so nice. Extremely creative. Yeah, yeah. I, we actually yeah. go to college together. We're both yes. GSUers. We're Owens. enrolled together uh, <gasps> online. Yes. We did go on campus together for the first semester. Yeah, you let me know. Hey, lady, I'm in here. You don't talk to me. I'm going to make you talk. And you stumped me every day until I talk to you. What it means to be a mom, it means, it means everything. It means being a champion. And you nurture them and you shelter them and teach them to become productive members of society. Being a mom means so many different things. But they're all great things. All right, hi, my name is Winston Ellerton, 22 years old, uh, soon to be a business owner and a Vigo streamer currently. And I have a little job on the side. I love to read the Bible. My favorite color is red. And I'm a bookworm. Favorite book to read, the best book of all time, the Bible. Oh, my mom is a supporter. She uplifts me. I'm always someone I can vent to, you know, she went without when I went with stuff, you know, so she means a lot to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if white mothers suddenly swap places with black mothers, there would be no uh, police shooting on our men. There would be no police force. They'd have the police defunded like people are trying to do right now. They don't want to switch places with a black man, woman and child because they know something wrong is going on. White mothers, they don't have to worry about sending their children anywhere. They just send them on out into the world. They can be misbehaved. They can do whatever they want. Little black children. Proper, prim and proper. You can't be yourself. You have to play this role to fit into society. This is taking a huge mental toll on me. It's taxing. Every time one of my sons or my husband leaves the house, I don't know if they're ever going to come back to me because you never know what some... Vigilante who has a blood, a, a thirst for black blood will decide to kill my husband or my children or some rogue cop who thinks, you know, they look suspicious by walking, breathing, driving, drinking, sleeping while black. It's a crime just to be black. Regardless if you're doing the right thing. I think it's rational, but I think at the same time, she should have more faith in the most high uh, as well as I do. And I keep his commandments. So. Therefore, I am protected by him, you know, I, but her worries and anxiety and fear is just a, just a, uh, the aftermath of the Willie Lynch. And um, it's the, you know, that's, that's pretty much it right there. It's just the reverse effects of Willie Lynch. And it's like you, you, you walk in a productive road, but yet somebody feels that, that the world will be better off without you. And it's also a effect of the curse of Deuteronomy 28, you know, telling us that we should, we would have, we would have no assurance of our life. So she had, in a way, she has every right to have that fear and anxiety of whenever I walk out that door, you know. But you know, as the scriptures say, fear not, for I am with you. Um, the senseless killing of black people, young black men and women, uh. uh all the false arrests, history, like you look at history, how black people have been treated over the years and how we're being treated right now. I, I think her fear is more than rational. I think it's, it's, it's it would be weird if it wasn't, you know, I mean, it'd be weird if she didn't have it. So 
Yeah, I'd say that's what makes it rational. How we're being treated right now and how they're making it known that they don't care about us. Yes, uh, we all fear something. Uh, you know, even the even the most uh, unfearful person in the world, they fear something. Uh, me personally, I just try to keep my head straight, keep my head up, and just think the best whenever I go into places. You know, because I know we have races everywhere in every in every other race. Even taking honey, out the garbage. even take. Listen, even when he goes to take out the garbage, I am two steps behind him, and I stand to the door and I watch to make sure he comes back safely. And the garbage is right on the curb, but you never can tell. You never know. You just never know the racist that lives next to you or the racist that's behind the badge or the racist that's in office or the racist that run the country. Because you just never know who's going to come in and snuff your child out. Snuff, I mean kill. Need I say more? In one instance, my child can go from being cute to criminal. Mm -hmm. Because in my eyes, they are magnificent. Mm -hmm. But what about society? All right. And it's not just me. It's not just us. Right. It's not just me, my brother, and my dad. It's also my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of people who like to exclude or forget that black women are affected by police brutality as well. They kill us so, too. Those who think my mother's prayers are totally ludicrous are obviously not black or have never been in a position of a black man, woman, or child. It's always scary when my mom is going somewhere and, and I don't know if they'll return, you know? You never know what the police or whoever might come up and think that they're, you know, loitering, doing something illegal. But they know something is wrong, is happening to us but they want to choose to ignore it and brush it off because they don't want the atrocities that they have committed being pushed up in their face. You know, I think what really gets me is when I'm walking, even though I drive a fancy car, I live in a big, beautiful home, but if I'm walking toward a crowd of white people, everybody automatically goes and grabs their purses and secures everything. But until I speak like this, they're fine. You know, when I start talking like this, everybody's okay. But when I'm walking past or I'm walking toward them, everybody's shaking. Mm. I'm human just like you, honey. You have nothing that I want. So I want white America to know that we are not a threat. And for those in power to stop treating us like we are. We all aren't that much different, you know. Each of us want some of the same things. There are always going to be a few bad apples, but the majority are just good people.